All right, so in this video, we're gonna be going over how and why to set realistic goals and the incredible importance of consistency and persistence in your weight loss journey. We're also gonna cover the top three tips or topics along this, so let's get into it. Okay, so number one, you wanna define what is of actual realistic fitness goal. It's great if, sorry, I'm still a little sick recording this video, but it's great if you have a goal of losing 100 pounds, if you have a goal of losing 150 pounds, even if you have a goal of losing 50 pounds, 20 pounds, 30 pounds, whatever it is. But I'm going to tell you the honest truth. Almost every person I've ever talked to completely, completely over or sorry, undershoot like the, the time frame for it. So because everybody wants instant quick fix dopamine, instant quick results. Right. And unfortunately, that's not happening. Right. Let's let, let me put this in perspective for you. Using myself as an example, I lost 150 pounds. Right. I didn't lose that overnight. And how long do you think it took me to gain that? Right. It took at, it took. Well, not at least it was literally 12 years of consistent neglect right and shitty health and and not working out and all this other shit right so fortunately for us and myself it doesn't take 12 years to revert that otherwise there's going to be even more people that are overweight right but um it took about 16 months of hard fucking work right um so the best way to set a realistic goal i'll get into some strategies but like especially when it comes to weight loss you don't need or don't want to lose more than 1% of your body weight. So if you are, just because everybody's a visual learner, uh, let's do this. If you're 300, oh, that's yellow. Hold on. So if you're 300 pounds, okay, 1%, oh my God, this is taking seven years, is three pounds, okay? So that means... You would want to lose or you shouldn't exceed losing more than three pounds in your first week. And now I'm not the greatest at math, but then the next week you would be 297 pounds. You would want to lose like 2.9 and so on and so on and so on. Now, if you take me, for example, or Sammy, for example, or pretty much any of my clients, right? So we can use myself as an example or actually Sammy because she lost weight quicker. She lost 120 pounds. Okay. Uh, 120. And she did that over the course of 14 months. So if we do, I, I'm just on my phone, I'm on the calculator. If we do 14 times uh, four, so that's 14 months times four weeks, that's 56 weeks. And then if you do 120 divided by 56, that's 2.1 pounds per week, right? And so on top of that, just to prove my point further, a, she started at 290, okay? And there we go, 290, 1% of that is 2.9 pounds. So she pretty much averaged one percent of her body weight consistently because obviously she got lower and lower and lower and lower and lower she got down to like 150 pounds um sammy i just didn't feel like downloading the picture and putting it there um but this is actually in my gym uh it's the same background same shirt same person uh lovely girl she's like one of my favorite clients i've ever worked with we're really close friends now okay so another thing on this topic s m a r t smart strategies right now what the fuck is that s is smart m is measurable a is achievable R is realistic and T is time frame. Okay, so not only does it have to be smart, but is it specific? And is it when does is it specific? Like uh I I want to lose weight. I I want to lose weight uh because of my health. That's not specific. Okay. I want to lose weight in X time frame because why? Now not every single person needs to have a, a perfectly clear why, but if you don't, you're probably gonna give up a lot sooner than you think, right? Um, so measurable, that comes with scales, right? With measurements, with inches, right? Achievable. We went over that. 1% of body weight, right? Realistic or relevant. Um, it's it's hand in hand with achievable. And then time frame, right? If you don't tell yourself, I'm going to accomplish this goal by this time, you're not going to, right? And you're much more likely to be more lazy and not actually take action that's required. Now, before we go into the other two steps, if you don't know what a realistic goal is, then ask. Right, drop a comment in the community or send me a message and be like, hey man, this is my goal. I want to lose a hundred pounds and I want to lose it in three months. Well, I'll just tell you that flat out right now. That's not gonna happen. Right. I mean, it's all dependent on you specifically. Like I have worked with clients that like, you know, they want to lose 20 pounds in 12 weeks. It's also dependent on your dedication, right? A lot of people are like, Wow, you lost so much weight so quick. But I'm I'm gonna be honest, like completely honest with you. I don't tell a lot of people this. The first 
nine months of me losing weight. It was practically my full time job to lose weight. Right. So I just graduated. It's a story for another day, kind of half graduated high school. And I'm sitting in my basement playing video games 14 hours a day, ordering McDonald's three times a week. I'm not joking. My dad's credit card was like 15 grand a month. Four of that was me ordering McDonald's because I didn't have any income. Um, I mean, obviously going back in time, he probably would have changed shit, but he didn't want to like starve his kid. I had an eating disorder as well, but uh, where I ate like the same stuff. But what was the point of this? The point was when I actually decided to take action and decided to change, I made it my full-time job to lose weight. So a lot of us probably have one point or another watched the show, the biggest loser, very, not a big fan of that. Um, but I almost in essence embodied that. So I'd still play video games like 12 hours a day or 10, but I would also walk my dog three times a week or sorry, three times a day, which for a big guy at 370, that's a lot. Um, and then eventually progressed to doing more cardio as well as I had my coach slash one of my best friends. It was the best man at his wedding, blah, 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 blah. Story for another day. Um, he came to train me in the basement of my house. I think we started at three, then went to four, then we went up to five times a week. And then we eventually progressed to going to the gym because I maxed out of weight. I maxed out of like progression and shit. Um, so I say that to say, you're probably someone who has kids or works nine to five or both, right? I've worked with many clients that have a crazy busy schedule. So don't compare yourself to me. Don't compare yourself to others. Compare yourself to you. And as long as you're hitting that 1% a week or around that ballpark, like two pounds a week, that is all that matters, right? All right, number two, strategy number two. I really like using this pen thing, okay? Oh, let me redo that. Make this bigger. Consistency, all right? And engaging in healthy exercise and healthy habits over time. And stress the importance of being persistent and staying committed to your goals, even when faced with challenges and setbacks. Look, life's not fucking perfect, right? It's not all sunshine and rainbows, kid. I like that line. It's from a movie somewhere. But um, what you need to realize is this is a marathon, right? This isn't a sprint, okay? This is not going to happen overnight. Um, although, you know, you might be tempted to take those epic or maybe you've tried. Even that is not going to get you to lose 100 pounds in 60 days. I mean, by some miracle, even if you did, you really think you're going to keep that off? Absolutely not. You're going to bounce right back, right? I had a client, she lost a hundred fucking pounds on keto. Second, she stopped keto. She gained 120 pounds back because it's not sustainable. Unless you are going to be doing keto for the rest of your life, which let's be real. Nobody's going to, a diet is not a diet if you can stick to it for the rest of your life. That's what I preach and teach people, right? I'm on a diet, but it's not an actual diet because I'm able to eat whatever the fuck I want whenever I want, as long as it's healthy and I know the timing and the ingredients and the substitutions for it, Right. But you don't want to go from zero to 60. That's never going to yield results because you're going to lose motivation quick and you're going to burn out quick, right? So start with small gradual changes. And what that could be would be a lot of you guys uh, don't know how to do exercise. I have the module on that. You're going to watch that, right? Um, actually, this is in the exercise module. What am I saying? So you're going to learn some stuff to do with that. And then I'm going to give you progressions and regressions of what to do with that. Start small. So you don't have to go and work out for a fucking hour every day. You can start with 10 minutes, 20 minutes, and then build up and build up and build up, right? Start with fucking one uh, exercise for your body, right? It could be a push-up and just throwing that out there, just a push-up. And you start with one set. Then the next day you do two sets, then three sets, then four sets. Then you add another exercise. You don't have to go from zero to 60. It's never really going to work because this is you against you. It's not you against Instagram. It's not you against some fitness magazine. It's not you against your friend unless you're in a competition. That's a story for another day. But it's you versus you. So as long as you wake up in the mirror and you are happy with the progress you're seeing and you are proud of yourself, that is all that fucking matters, right? Okay. Obviously, I just want to put out there, you know, you have kids, you have a job, a shit gets in the way, right? But then you need to develop strategies and a plan to accommodate that. And I can help with that. Um, there's too much specificity or there's too much different um, things around that aspect that it would be too hard and too long to cover in this video. But just know that, you know, life gets tough and there's going to be a lot of stuff that gets in the way. But as long as you take consistent action day in and day out, then you're fine. You're on the right track. Like, even if you take a step back, as long as you take two steps forwards, right? That's a story for another day, but you don't want to like binge eat, right? You can, you can fuck up a little bit on a diet, but then make sure you're not fucking up the entire week's worth of progress. Okay. And number three. Okay. So certain things that are going to hinder exercise, or I like to call them excuses, right? Such as lack of time, motivation, or resources. Now, lack of time. 
There's a very good quote. It's, 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 it's in a lot of gyms. Okay. Nobody is too busy. It's just a matter of how, or what that priority is on your list. Right. Or it's, it's not a matter of your, uh, you're not busy. It's a matter of what priority it is on your list or something like that. Right. Basically I work a hundred hours a week, but I still prioritize exercising. Right. I don't make excuses for it. I get it done. I'm going to exercise at this time, every single time, no matter what. Right. And look, I don't have children. Right. I, I, I might not have children. I don't know. So I'm not discrediting. They come first. Right. And more than likely your job comes second. But there are scenarios in where you're going to have to make sacrifices or prioritize you and your goals in order to get the actual things you're trying to accomplish done. In terms of lack of time, that's that's not a good excuse. Make the time. OK. In terms of motivation, that's where having this community, that's where having a coach will definitely help you with that, right? Not everybody or every morning is going to be motivated. Believe it or not, I'm not fucking motivated every morning to wake up, right? But what drives me is it's, it's, it's my success versus me, right? Or what drives me is my client's success is knowing that they I have someone that depends on me and, and someone that needs help, right? Um, and then in terms of resources, well, hello, this whole community, right? In terms of some solutions, definitely scheduling workouts in advance is a great option. Um, so, you know, if you use Google Calendar or reminders or alarms on your phone, set a fucking alarm. It's the same thing with food. Some clients, believe it or not, that I, I work with, they're 300 pounds and only eat 2000 calories a day. They need to eat more food. I tell them to set a reminder to eat food, right? Um, it's the same thing with working out. Block off the time. And unless some godforsaken thing happens, stick to it, right? Um, and then uh, regarding mental barriers, such as fear as failure or self-doubt, stop just start just start you can't the the fear of failure the fear like anxiety starts with the overthinking and and fear of failure what the fuck is there to fail with yeah you might have okay you might have tried losing weight a bunch of times okay i tried losing weight i don't know 20 times 30 30 times an, an, an absurd amount of numbers right but if i didn't try that like 100th time or that 99th time right would i have actually gotten a success probably not right? So there's different techniques and there's different things that you need to try, but whatever it is, do it consistently and do it day in and day out because gradual things will build up over time. And then lastly, reach out for support, whether it's in this community, whether to hire me one-on-one -on -one for coaching, uh, like you're not, you don't know all the answers, right? If you did, you probably wouldn't be in the position you're in now. I had a coach. I literally hired a coach, right? The top people in the world, whether it's business or especially a good example is athletes. They have coaches. They have coaches for coaches. Tom Brady is the greatest quarterback of all time. And I'm saying that as a Steelers fan. If you know anything about sports, it's hard for me to admit that. But he had a coach, right? And he had a trainer and he had a strength and he had a massage therapist and he had a, a this and a that and a, and a mental coach, right? I think he worked with Tony Robbins at one point. So the top people in the world have a coach. There's no, there's nothing bad or there's no, it's not embarrassing to have a coach, right? It's, it's, I've, I'm, I'm where you want to be. I'm like five, 10 years ahead of where you are in the future. So take all the knowledge and experience that I know and implement it to you. Cause what's the most valuable thing we have as humans? It's not money, it's time. So if we can fast track you wasting a shit ton of your time and energy, then let's do that. If not, that's okay. That's why we're in this community and we have this community and please use the knowledge that I've spent so much time making for you and actually take action on it so you can fucking change either working with me or not. See you in the next video.